This morning, I'm going to continue our series on devices of the devil. And the subject of today's message is devil possession and oppression. We are right here at the end of the series. Next Sunday morning, we will finish it, Lord willing, sort of like a, this is what we do in light of all of his devices. Now, what I'm planning to do, and I want you to listen to me very carefully this morning, I plan to preach part of this message this morning and then conclude the message tonight. And our main text this morning is going to be Matthew chapter 12, and we'll look at verses 43 through 45. And tonight, our main text is going to be Matthew, uh, excuse me, Mark chapter 5, verses 1 through 20, as we'll look at the maniac of Gadara legion and find out some things about devil possession I want you to please be in prayer for me this morning a very serious subject and um, I don't doubt that the devil will try to interrupt this and so take your Bible now let's stand together Matthew chapter 12 verses 43 through 45 we're going to honor the reading of God's word now this morning I'm just going to say a lot of things I think that needs to be said about this subject to help us be educated on it if you've never heard much about it or if you've heard something that's erroneous. I'll do a lot of teaching, but you'll see exactly why I've chosen to start with this particular passage this morning because my very last point this morning, I I want to preach it. That's the point of application. That's the point that really is important to me, okay? Um, But I want you to notice our text, Matthew chapter 12. Beginning reading at verse number 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So let's do bow our head. Let's do close our eyes. Be in prayer for me. I'll be praying for you as we cover this subject here this morning. Brother Tim Jones, please pray for me if you would. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you. You can be seated this morning. Now, before we get into our text, there are a few things that I feel like I really need to cover. First of all, when you look in your Bible, the Bible speaks of people who are possessed by the devil or devils. And uh, then it speaks about people that are oppressed by the devil. You actually see that term oppressed in Acts chapter 10, verse number 38. And it was referring to Jesus' ministry when he's going through there. Now, the context of that verse over there in Acts chapter 10, verse number 38, seems very similar to me to possession. But I guess there's a ways it can be different. If you oppress something, that means you burden something. If you oppress something, that means you overpower it. Um, And certainly, listen, certainly the devil can do that to Christians and non-Christians alike. And um, the argument is often made, and the question comes up, can a Christian be possessed with the devil? And um, there's usually a quick answer given, and I think it involves more, more talking. And you say, okay, Brother Dennis, now I don't know about all that. Well, just hear me out for a moment. When you and I get saved, the Holy Spirit comes and lives within our soul, correct? 
and we experience what the book of Colossians chapter 2 describes to us as a spiritual circumcision. And our body is now cut away from our spirit, from our soul. All right? So, when Jesus Christ comes and saves us and the Holy Spirit comes and lives within us, if the Holy Spirit is living within our soul, ain't no devil can get in there. I'm sorry, no devil can get, go in there. Ain't supposed to say, you ain't supposed to say ain't. But, <laughs> every once in a while I have to get back to my old country roots, you know. So, so yes, once you're saved, once you're saved, a devil can never possess your soul or you be in danger of losing salvation or a devil get control of your soul. It can never happen because the Holy Spirit's there. He's never going to leave. And a devil cannot get in your soul. Amen. Amen. But your flesh is cut loose from your soul. So then comes the question, what can a devil do to your flesh? Because your flesh is not saved. So can a devil... Well, you can call it possession, you can call it oppression, you can come up with all these little fancy words or whatever. But can a devil get into side of your flesh even though you're saved and manipulate you and control you and oppress you? And the answer is yes. Absolutely, he can and has. He's done it to me. I'm sure, he's done it to some of you. Um, I will tell you this. Our flesh can be controlled by the devil. Just a few passages, Matthew 16, 23. Remember when Jesus turned to Peter and he said, Get thee behind thee, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but thou, but those that be of man. You can say, well, he, he called Peter Satan. Satan was using him. Was he in him? Was he on him? Whatever, he called him Satan. <laughs> you do whatever you want to with that. Satan was there doing something. Ephesians 4.27, a warning to us that are saying, neither give place to the devil. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 7 says, Moreover, he have, must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. The devil has snares. He will trap you. And 1 John 3.8 says, He that committed sin is of the devil. Listen, any time we sin... Do you know who's influencing us? Who's behind that? Mm -hmm. He that committed sin is of the devil. The devil is the one doing that. So you need to understand that this morning. First of all, about the devil control. Listen, just because you're saved doesn't mean he can't influence you. He can't control you. He can't get a hold of you. He can't use your mouth. He can't use your hands. He can't use your eyes or your ears. He absolutely can and he does. Now, secondly, I want you to understand this. The Bible word is devil. It's not demon. You never see the word demon in your Bible. The King James translators got it right. The, because the Greek philosophers believed that some demons could be good. It was like white magic and black magic. Listen, all magic is bad. And, and in the Bible, you don't... In the King James Bible, you don't read the word demon. That's what we see here in our society and all. But you have, you have in our Bible the devil, a, a devil, devils are unclean spirits. That's what you read and that's what you have. And listen, devils are not the same as fallen angels. They are morally, more likely associated with idolatry and paganism and false gods, witchcraft, mediums, necromancers. Listen, when you read in your Old Testament, you'll find out. That every false god is represented by a devil. Leviticus 17, 7. And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils after whom they have gone a whoring. Deuteronomy 32, 17. They sacrifice unto devils, not to God. The, to God's, little g, to God's whom they knew not. To new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers fear not. 2 Chronicles eleven fifteen, talking about Jeroboam. And he ordained him priest for the high places and for the devils and for the calves which he had made. So these devils represent false gods, false religions. And you say, what could, a, what, could a, what could a devil or an unclean spirit? Listen, it's not the same as the fallen angels. Whatever they are, they're not the same as fallen angels. They are not the same as the sons of God. 
that were fell and left their and come down and cohabitated with the with the beast and the and, and humanity. It's not the same. There's something different. As a matter of fact, if you try to figure out what are they, how are they, you know, this is this is just conjecture or whatever. Um, Matthew chapter 12, verse number 24 says, But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of devils. You know what the word Beelzebub means? Lord of the flies. The prince of devils. He's talking about the devil there. And um, it could be something if, uh, like a little winged creatures. I know that there's birds in the Bible, unclean birds that represent devils. So you have like a little wing, and listen, I'm not going to burn at the stake for this, whatever they are. <laughs> could, could, could actual devils be the size of a fly or something like that? I don't know. Possibly. But they're not the same as fallen angels. And they're not the same as like the sons of God. They're something entirely different. And they're called in your Bible devils. Like you'll have the devil, and sometimes it'll say a devil. Or plural for devils or unclean spirits. They are spirits that come in you and they are not clean. Either they come in you or they oppress you or whatever, however you want to say it this morning. They are not clean. Thirdly, this is very important and it's so important I'm going to have you turn to your Bible and look there. Some mental illness is caused by the devil and some is not. And you have to understand that. And preachers have no business trying to be a medical doctor. I know some preachers that told folks to quit your medicine and do this, and you just need to trust God more, and whatever, and they got a physiological problem. And they're stepping into an area they don't have no knowledge of. And they're stupid. Some preacher may be listening to me this morning, you say, well, I do that. Well, you're stupid. You don't have any training in the area. Deal with a man's soul. But, but the Bible, just for folks that don't, that don't understand it, the Bible purposely lets you know that you can have some mental illness that has nothing to do with the devil mm-hmm. and some that does. For an example, take your Bible and turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 4. Matthew, chapter 4. I know this is a little slow getting off the runway, but we've got to cover this stuff. Thank you, Pastor. Matthew, chapter 4, and verse number 24. And notice what it says is it's talking about our Lord. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments. Here we go. And those which were possessed with the devil, with devils, comma, and those which were lunatic, comma, and those that had the palsy, semicolon, and he healed them. What you have there is you have somebody with a spiritual condition condition that's possessed by the devil lunatic that's a mental condition and then those that had palsy that's a physical condition now that's your old uh, King James Bible word lunatic it comes from a Latin word lunaticus Um, it's originally referred to somebody that would have epilepsy or madness and they thought it was caused by the moon Mm -hmm. so that's where you get that part of that word there now They might not have had it all down, but they were right. Listen, that moon does affect you. I've been out street preaching on a Friday night when the moon was full, and you've got a different crowd you're preaching to when that moon is full. You ask some of of these people that work in prisons. You ask some of these doctors in the hospital. You ask them if that moon don't have something to do with people's behavior. They're howling at the moon. Ooh. Any of you ever howled? Any ever had anybody howl in the emergency room, Miss Jenny? Dr. Presley, you know about it. So that shows you right there. Do you see that? Right there in that passage, he makes a distinction between somebody that has mental problems and somebody that's possessed with the devil. Now, take your Bible and turn a few chapters over to Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. Now he's going to make a connection with mental problems and the devil. You got to get all of this. And this is a fellow that has a son that's possessed by the devil. 
by a devil. Matthew chapter 17, verse number 15. Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For all times he falleth into the fire and often to the water. And notice what the Christ does for him in verse number 18. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. Out of him, he was in him. And the child was cured from that very hour. So I think it's very important to understand that there's some mental illness that can have causes because of a devil and some that doesn't. And this is, this is what I believe. I believe many times what we face is a mixture of several things. I believe that if you have something physiologically wrong with you, it can affect you emotionally. And if you have something physiologically and emotionally with you, don't you think the devil sees you when you're at a, at a weak point in your life? Now, and then wouldn't that be a perfect time for him to then uh, jump on you spiritually? I told you about my struggles and all that uh, I went through since my childhood. And I've told you about my nervous breakdown here and trying to figure it all out. And if you were to just to ask me and just say, what do you think? What do you think happened with your breakdown and all that? I would say it would be a mixture of three things. I think it was something physical. I think it was something mental and emotional. And I think it was something spiritual. I think it was a mixture of all of it. I think it was something physiological. And it was something with me dealing with some, with some uh, issues that, that had affected my nervous system and affected me. And then the devil sees that and that's his opportunity when you're weak to jump in there and get on you. You understand that? So today, some of you, we, you could be here affected by something physically, something mentally, and something spiritually. And you may be here uh, affected by some type of depression or anxiety or whatever. And, and you may have a physiological thing going on there where you need medicine. And you ought to get it. And then you may have something where you say, okay, it is physiological, but the devil attacks you in that thing. And medicine will help you with the physiological side effects, but it will not stop the attack of the devil. That's why you might need some medicine and the King James Bible. Amen. Amen. You got it? Yes, sir. <laughs> but whatever your opinion is on devil possession or oppression or whatever, there's one thing for sure. The devil can torment and work through a Christian. I'm not talking about lost people. We know the devil can possess lost people. And that's really what we're going to focus on tonight. But he can, he can manipulate and torture. Listen, I know the devil uses saved people very often. And he can get in your head. He can get in your mouth. And he can get in your eyes and get you to doing and saying and being parts of things you never thought you would be a part of. The devil is influencing you. Right. Amen. Ephesians 4.27 again says, never, neither give, don't give place to the devil because he'll take over. That's why we're told in Ephesians 6.11 that we are to put on the whole armor of God. Why? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. He's talking to Christians, folks. He's not talking to lost people. 1 Timothy 4, 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith given heed to, to, to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. We think a lot of times that the devil is bothering us mentally or emotionally or physically or whatever. But I'm going to tell you one of the biggest ways the devil gets a chokehold on Christians and entire churches. Doctrines of devils. And the closer we get to the end, the more churches are going to be full of it. And the average Christian don't know a thimble full of Bible, and they're licking that stuff up like a little kitten, licking up milk out of a saucer. And they like the way their preacher is, and he's real nice, and he's real polite, and he's got show and tell, and he's got charisma. He comes up there, and he doesn't scowl like me, he doesn't raise his voice like me, and he just, da 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 yeah, let the cobra just until it pops you in your head. But now, nowadays, preachers like me is the problem. 
You want some slick talker. Just, oh, he's just he's got such a great delivery. And he's just so kind and whatever. All right, all right. Eat it up, brother. Eat it up. There was a time when preachers stood on something and they preached it emphatically like they believed it. And that's the kind of preacher you wound up with here. And I don't plan on changing. I'll relocate before I change. I've come too far now. I'm way down the road, 30 years into it. I'm not going to get down here toward the end of my ministry and mess up because there's a bunch of compromisers. You know who's behind all that? Him. And this idea that if he raises his voice, he's mean. And if he talks politely, he's nice. You've been sold a bill of goods. How many of those suckers you've seen on TV that talks so nice and polite in your billfold and trying to get in your bedroom? It's an amazing thing to me. Don't no woman flirt with me. I can't remember one woman flirting with me in 30 years. Now, that does sort of bother me. I'm like, am I that repulsive? <laughs> I tell you why, because I don't send off no vibes. Amen. Don't nobody get any vibes that I'm a womanizer and I want to get somebody else and I'm, I'm trying to slip behind Miss Darby's back because I'm not slipping through there. You know, got on, listen, I'm not against preachers. If you want to dress nice and have the cuff links and have the nice tie and not look crooked and blink like me and have your hair fixed, help yourself. Yeah. But there's something wrong with the preacher. He's always smoothing around there with the ladies. Look on his Facebook page and three-fourths of them that's giving him the thumbs up and commenting are ladies. You better watch a fella like that. Oh, but Brother Dennis, you're loud and obnoxious. No, you've been, you've, been, you've been fooled is what you've been. The one I'm talking about has got you, brother. Anyway, we run a good little rabbit there. Let's get back. Listen, there's a fellow Paul turned over to the devil. He was a Christian. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together in my spirit with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. He will deliver you over. And the devil may not can destroy your soul if you're saved, but he can absolutely kill you, put you in the ground if the Lord allows him to. Now, as I've already spoken to you about, and I want you to listen to me, opening doors to the devil we got to remember that we play a huge part in what the devil does, to how he does use us as a Christian when we open these doors. And there's all kind of doors we can open to the devil. Through our music. We open doors to the devil through music. These kids, you got to watch what they're listening to. You, some of you, you better watch what you listen to, all of us. We open doors to the devil through movies. I can't understand the life of me that people that will pay good money to go see somebody scare them. I ain't paying nobody to scare me. Some of you folks, you want to pay, pay good money and go to a movie and watch folks chopping people up and sneaking around there stabbing and grabbing people and folks hollering and running out through the cornfield screaming and somebody chasing them with a chainsaw. I'm not trying to be ugly, but you ought to pray to God about that. You guys, you guys, you do, you do. The devil is in your mind. Anybody that likes to hear people scream and holler and run and carry on because somebody's chopping them up, you got a devil. You got a devil. You got a devil. One more time in case you didn't hear me. Devil. That's a devilish person that wants to see that mess. Pornography. I think I, this is what I think about pornography. I think I think it just starts out like a, a thing of the flesh, not so much a devil. It's it's um. There's nothing abnormal about boys being interested in girls, or girls boys. I mean, there's nothing abnormal about a boy wanting to see a girl. 
Now, this is what happens in pornography. You get to doing that when you're not supposed to and God told you not to do it. And the people that stay in pornography and don't get away from it and don't get victory over it, that pornography grows. Yeah. And it grows and it grows. And it takes more to stimulate them, yeah. more to stimulate them, and more to stimulate them. And then you get in this wicked stuff that ain't got nothing to do with a natural attraction to a woman. They're in this torture stuff and this bestiality and all that kind of mess. And that's when they get a devil. Amen. They get a devil. Yeah. And opening up doors to that mess. Different objects, drugs, and alcohol, that opens up doors to the devil. Involvement with the cult. Your past, listen, even though you get forgiveness and you get saved and you get cleansed from your past, if you fooled around with that stuff in the past, you still may have some devils fooling with you. You have to watch out for that stuff. Family associations and curses, and I'm not trying to get charismatic here with you. And I believe once you get saved, Jesus Christ will break the curse and whatever. And you can call it curses or whatever. But listen, I, one thing I am a firm believer in, I've seen it in my family, I've seen it in another family. There's things that come down through families. And it comes down through people and it'll get a hold of you. I've seen it. I know it's true. And Jesus Christ is the only one that can break those cycles. But that's the devil. Now, just a few minutes in our text this morning. And I'm going to get to the main point, And we won't be much longer. Notice our text. Just a few things you learn. And as uh, we get back here, Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. The first thing I want you to see is this. These devils are looking for a body to inhabit. Yeah. Unlike I said, the fallen angels, they, they need a body. First number 43, when the unclean spirit is going out of a man, he walketh. When he's out, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. He's not resting. He's not, that unclean spirit is not happy till he finds a, a body to get in. And notice what it says. It appears, number two, that they like wet places. They like to be around water. Listen, human bodies are mostly water. Mm -hmm. Notice what he said there. He said, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. He walketh through dry places. I've heard different older preachers say, any of you ever heard, heard preachers talk about the, how the, the, the demonic or devilish activity increases the closer t uh, towns are to water? Any of you ever heard that? At first, I didn't know about that. But after living some time, I think these preachers are right. I think the more towns you got around rivers and, and, the, and the ocean and the sea and whatever, there's something about that water that draws those evil spirits. You say, you know, went cuckoo. No, I may not be as cuckoo as you think I am. You better get to studying and looking at it on your own self. Matter of fact, we're pretty close to the big old Mississippi River, ain't we? Might be what's wrong with us. The next thing I want to see, before I get to my final point that's really important, there are ranks of power in the spirit world of darkness. Verse number 45, Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. So some, some spirits are, seem to be stronger, more wicked, or more powerful than others. It's like a chain of command, it appears. Mm -hmm. It's like some, are, some are, have more authority, more powerful than others. But now this is the point I want to get. I'm preaching to Christians tonight. Now if you come back tonight, if you come back tonight, the message is going to be much more directed on devil possession and what that means and signs of devil possession and what happens when a devil takes over a person and all that when, we, when we're looking out, out there in uh, Mark chapter 5. But this is to Christians. This is how the devil affects Christians and how he oppresses and can possess people. And again... We know that a devil cannot possess your soul. You know that, don't you, if you're saved. If you're saved, it cannot happen. But here's, the, here's, the key, here's the key verse. Don't miss this this morning. It isn't enough to get rid of the, of the devil. You've got to replace him with something. You understand that, Christian? Listen to me. Listen to me. This is the preaching part of it. In just a few more minutes. Notice what happened there in verse number 44. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. 
And when he has come, listen what he, how he found it. The devil found this man. It's empty. There's nothing else in there. It's swept. There's nothing else in there. It's garnished. It's all tidy and everything's out. But what? So you say, oh, hooray, the devil's gone and it's empty. No, 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 no. It's setting them up for a worse failure. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. Notice what it says. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. He's even in worse shape spiritually. Now this is the teaching that you and I have got to get a hold of. First of all, you don't get saved by casting out the devil. You get saved when the Holy Spirit comes to live within your soul. And he gets rid of the devil. But listen to me now. It isn't enough to get rid of the devil. You know what we talk about a lot in Baptist churches, and we should. We don't talk about it near as much anymore because folks don't believe in it. We talk about separation. Mm -hmm. Biblical separation. And and you should. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, Brother Dan, when you hear somebody talking about biblical separation, they're talking about all the stuff they don't do anymore or they quit. But that's only part of it. You have not separated under God unless you get some things out and then put some things in. Do you understand it? That's biblical separation. And for you to think, okay, I'm going to quit this. I'm going I'm to throw down my pornography. I'm quitting my drugs. I'm quitting listening to that old heavy metal music. I'm stopping everything. I'm stopping it. I'm getting it out. And you feel a little peace after a while. If you don't replace it with something spiritual. Something's coming back worse than what left. Do you hear me? Something's coming back worse than what left. It's not enough to talk about separation. I quit this. I don't do this. I don't uh, uh, you know, smoke, dip, and chew, and date girls that do, and all that kind of mess. You don't just try to get rid of the devil. You put stuff in your heart and your mind to help. You know, listen, listen, listen. The flesh will replace one bad habit with another. That's what the flesh will do. You got to fill your soul with the Bible. You got to fill it with prayer. You got to fill it with good music and church and fellowship with God. Because the devil is out to control you and ruin you. And you call it possession, oppression, obsession. I don't care what you call it. But he can and will torment a Christian. He will use a Christian. And he'll control you if you give him an open door. Devil possession is real. And we're going to read about it tonight. If you don't fill your heart with the Lord Jesus Christ and fill it with his book, it won't matter what kind of sinful and even devilish activity that you no longer take a part in the devil will come back and the attack will be worse if there isn't anything in your life this morning that is it's going to be worse if there is anything in your life that's giving him an open door and you're not filling your heart and mind with what you should listen you know what I'm asking you to do this morning repent of your sin change your mind about it run to Jesus Christ run to his book Stay on your knees. Stay in church. Listen, 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 Christian. You've got to keep your heart so full of God that it has no room for the devil. Amen. All right, every head bowed and every eye closed. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If the Lord's speaking to anybody today and you need to make any move and pray about anything, pray for yourself or somebody else or whatever.